all right guys how's it going so yeah it's been quite the interesting weekend so i tell you what <laughs> we uh well let's start with uh i lost another pocket knife <laughs> it happened again i don't know what so this is a is a brand new one now luckily i bought spares but i only got one left now after this so i'm gonna to have to uh i'm gonna to try to come up with some kind of an idea i might do some research online see what i can figure out um to hook onto my knife to make it easier to find it if i should lose it i don't know if like some kind of a long uh keychain kind of like thing or some kind of a tracker or scanner or something. I don't really know. Something to notify me when... Well, I guess just to make it easier to find my shit. Because, uh... These are $30 knives. And this is my second one now I've lost. The first one I lost last year... Um... At the John Deere dealer. It's kind of funny how that happens all around, kind of around the, around, around the same time. And then just a few days ago, I lost my pocket knife again. I kind of have an idea where I think it's at this time. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure because I need the young guy to get his damn ass down here and get this hay cut off so then I can scan uh, that part of the ground again. I think it's... I think it's on the trail, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure. I checked everything where I thought it definitely would have fell off, and it wasn't there. So I don't know exactly where it's at. I haven't figured that out yet. So, and I, it's going to make it easier for me. I think once the young guy at least cuts the hay, he doesn't really even have to, to bail it right away, obviously. It's just to kind of get the hay into a pile. Um, and then I think I could, I could scan my trail a little easier. I and mean, there's a chance that the mower could pick it up, which then if that gets in between the sickle and the guard, well, then he's, he's going to bust a, a sickle, but I can't help that. So if it hits it, then at least he'll find it. But if it's, if, you know, there's a chance that it could just fall deeper into the ground and then the more won't even won't even hit it so so the sooner he gets that cut then i'll have a better chance at least scanning the field and looking for it obviously but i'm gonna have to come up with something so i can't uh well it makes it harder to lose these damn knives um because they're just ridiculously expensive and i don't know where it's at like I said, I think the other one, it fell out at the John Deere dealer because I think I had it before I went to the John Deere dealer. And then after, I noticed it was gone. Now, I could have went back to the John Deere dealer and walked around and looked for it, but I was already too far from from the dealer. I said, well, if somebody finds it, they're going to have, you know, they're going to find a good knife. So, because these are... Um, um, I, th I think you pronounced the name Gerber. I think that's how you pronounce it. But these have actually been really good knives. I've been I've been really happy with them, and they seem they seem to last a really long time. Of course, I've never had one come apart on me. Uh, and the amount of time that I've actually had the, I mean, even my first one that I had, my very very first one, I think I had that like two years, and. It was starting to get loose, like the where the blade pivots. It was starting to get loose, but they had a regular set screw in it, and you could just use a regular. Uh, I think you could have just used a regular, yeah, just a regular flathead screwdriver, and you could just tighten it yourself. And that's what I did, and then it was that was tight. So, and then my second one that I had, the one that I lost just a couple of days ago, that one was actually extremely tight. But it did loosen up with time. Now I could have, you know, loosened it myself, but I don't really want to do that. I think if you just fling it a few times, it'll loosen it up for you. 
This one's actually a little bit too loose. I might actually have to tighten it just, just a hair bit, but other than that, I think it's fine. Um, but I, I just, I can't fucking believe it, you know? I lost another one of these damn knives. And these are, like I said, are $30 knives, so... Uh, I don't know. I guess what I should do... Um, I guess it really depends on what kind of pants you're wearing, because if you're wearing blue jeans, it's a different story, but if you're wearing sweatpants or, or even in your PJs, you know, you don't really have, like, a belt loop. You know how, like, jeans, they have the belt loops going through them, so you can put a belt through it. Well, that would be an, an okay thing there, because what you could do is just get, like, a piece of wire, you know, or even some string, tie the string one end to the to the knife and then the other end to your pant, you know, to the belt loop and then you'd be fine. But if you're wearing sweatpants or anything else more comfier, you're not going to have that choice. So I don't know, but I guess that's one thing I got to stop doing is laying stuff on the hood of my blazer, throw it on the seat or throw it in the center, center console doohickey cup holder thing, somewhere where it's not going to get lost. So that happened, and then uh, it was Friday night. I was, it was this was at like one o'clock in the morning because I completely forgot about it. And they were talking a chance of rain, possibly storms, but then they kind of they kept pushing it back until this morning. We actually got a thunderstorm this morning at like six o'clock. Uh, I got about a half inch, not quite half inch, but pretty damn close. So. Um, but, so, but, you know, on the old air conditioner, um, it's on its, it's, it's on its last legs anyway, and I was hoping that we could, you know, limp it through the rest of the year, and we could have, um, but you have to take the lid off in order to get to the motor, the cooling motor, or the cooling fan, whatever, um, because sometimes the motor will stick. And he tried to find a new motor for that, but he says that it wasn't happening. That That's like a 40-year-old unit, and nobody's going to make parts for that anymore. And it is true, and it's, it's it's just outdated. It still got the job done. It wasn't fantastic, but it was, you know, acceptable. So it's better than nothing, but now we're at nothing. Because <laughs> uh, last or uh, Friday night, I was kind of in a hurry. To put the lid on and somehow I managed to punch a hole in one of, the, one of those little copper pipes that comes out in loops I think that's the condenser I think and it's kind of it's kind of like a rad you know it helps cool your engine but but you have those little copper pipes that come out and then they loop back in you know I think you're free on um goes it flows through those pipes and then it cools or whatever um yeah somehow i managed to punch just the tiniest little fucking hole in one of those little copper pipes and it blew all my freon out so i called the plumber guy i went all weekend without it because i knew he wasn't going to do anything on the weekends so i called him monday morning he says yeah i i could i could braze that hole or I could just re replace the condenser, but he's just like, the chances of finding it are probably pretty slim. But I don't know. He didn't. He didn't. Really, he didn't think it was worth doing. He just didn't want to do it. He says, "Well, considering how old it is, you know." But I don't know. He didn't want to do it, and he says that it would cost like five hundred bucks to. I don't know what the hell he was exactly saying. I don't know if he misunderstood me or what. I didn't want to replace the condenser. I just wanted to patch the hole. And then he could put more Freon in it. And then pressure test it. And then run it for a few minutes. And if it runs and cools, well, then it's fine. But apparently that was going to cost 500 bucks to do all that. And he's just like, well, I'm better off not even charging you that 500 bucks. And you guys could just use that 500 bucks to use it as like a, you know, to help buy a new one I was like yeah well I'm not buying a new one either and he says well you can get newer mini split units because that's what this is it's a mini split but it's you know 1940s technology 
And he says that the newer ones are a lot more quieter, they're a lot more efficient, and they can do a much better job than the older stuff. But he says even for them, they're like two or $3,000. I didn't really want to go that route anymore. I would like to switch over to central air. It's like, okay, well, if you want central air, well, then you have to have a furnace installed. And then you'd have to have a condensing unit outside your house, which is what we have here, even with the mini split. You have a unit inside and a unit outside. He says you'd have to have that. And that could cost you probably double the price because now you have to install a furnace, run power to it, you know... But he says those those things can cost more. But the reason why I want to go switch over to central air is because you can actually get vents put in the floor. And then each room is guaranteed air. Whereas a mini split unit is not. It's You can split it in two different directions, but it's not going to really do anything. You know. Um, so, like, it's... You're not... You're not you're not sending air to each room directly. What you would have to do, with, especially with the mini split unit, and this is what we had to do in the past, is get the get the kitchen and the living room as cool as you could, and in the hallway. But then you would have trouble getting the the bedrooms to cool down. So then you'd have to put a fan, you know, like a pedestal fan there, and blow the air into the room. Whereas, you know, if you had central air, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to do that because each room would have a vent. So that's the route I would like to go. I like to update it to central air, and that way each room is guaranteed air. We don't need air conditioning really in the bathroom, or maybe you know, I mean, you probably would want one at least in the kitchen, but for sure in the bathroom we don't need it because the bathroom has tile. And the bathroom always seems to be 10 degrees cooler in there than the rest of the house or even outside, you know. Because it's 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 all just plastic and tile in that bathroom, so there's nothing for it to really absorb heat. If anything, it's going to absorb the coldness and then push it into the bathroom. So it's never really an issue. So, but what are you going to do? So somehow I managed to punch a hole through that and fuck that deal for the rest of the year. It's going to be okay for today and the next couple of days, but then after that we're supposed to get back up to the up to the nineties again, which is fan freaking tastic. So what are you going to do? So we'll we'll be out of air conditioning for the rest of this year. That's for sure. We won't be getting anything. Maybe next year we can. I don't know. Um, I just I don't know. I gotta. <laughs> Lots of other projects to go too, so just gotta try to do what we can, I guess. So, but uh, yeah. So what else? There was a third thing too. I think I don't remember now. There was my knife, my air conditioner. Oh yeah, and then my the third thing actually was my parts that I had ordered for the farm. Well, they were supposed to come Saturday. That was the latest that they were scheduled to show up. Didn't show up Saturday. I was kind of hoping Friday because it looked like that the packages were sitting in in the cities um, Thursday. They went into the cities Thursday and then they were there overnight. I figured, okay, well, it's still a weekday. They're going to haul. Some reason it didn't move. It didn't move at all. It didn't It didn't even get to where it needed to go. So I didn't get my package until today. So that's what we'll look at here now, but this is not for the 1586. I am still working on the 1586. I did finally find a video on YouTube about the torsion bar and kind of stuff like that. It's not great, but it's it's more of a help than anything. Um, so there is gonna be more tearing this thing apart. I just got done, well, I did a lot yesterday, but I brought one here into the shop i brought the second half of whatever they call that it's like a three-point hitch swing stop that stops your three-point from swinging side to side yeah you have those other stabilizers that stop it but these are are truly designed to stop they don't allow that much movement so but we already had one off 
um, because we started using the tractor to move around bales. So we had to take one off because we weren't getting the three point to open wide enough to accept a hay mover or a bale spear or whatever we're using. So we took one off. Well, I took the other one off yesterday because it had to come off. And then the thing that the drawbar slides through, because the drawbar slides through it, and then your three point, like when it swings, you know, back and forth, it pulls on that center thing, and that center thing can kind of rotate up and down. I don't know what they call it. I haven't looked it up yet in the book. But that had to come off, too. That was a nightmare and a half. It, it took literally like six different sizes sockets and every tool I can think of. So it's going to be a nightmare to put it back on. But it sounds like pretty much no matter what, the, the PTO has to come out. No matter what. Because apparently the, the oil seals do not sit on the torsion bar itself. They're in the housing of the rear end. So, which isn't, a, it's not a horrible thing. I would have liked it if they were actually on the torsion bar. But I guess how that's just how International designed it. So, so, but in order to get to those seals, you have to take the torsion bar out. Well, you can't take the torsion bar out if you have one, all that crap in the way. And your three-point hitch. And two, apparently, inside, which would be between your PTO housing and another part, there's a, some kind of a, a rod. It's not really a rod, but it's like a, a bracket. And that bracket is mounted to the torsion bar. And I think that locks the torsion bar into place so it can't swing or it can't try to walk off to one side or the other. And I think it also stops it from trying to rotate. So no matter what, the PTO has got to come out. Um, from what I see online anyway in that video, and like I said, the video wasn't great, but it sure helped me out to understand this a little bit better. Um... But it still sounds sounds like it's, it's going to be a total gut job on the rear end. PTO, three-point hitch, which I'm still going to try to work on a little bit more today. Since I removed all that trash, it's given me better access to where the, the lower or the main lift arms attach to the tractor. It's given me better access to that, and I can see that a lot better now. So I'm able to, you know ponder over it a little bit more and study it which i'm probably not going to do until this evening um so but that's what i did yesterday so that was it, it took me two hours i think it took me about two hours to take all this crap apart a lot of that was just waste of time trying to run around trying to figure out what tools i needed figure out what size um socket i needed I don't know if International had two different kinds for that center thing. But I started off with a one-inch socket. Somehow I managed to work my way down to a 15 sixteenths. Um, and that was a 12-point socket, whereas mine are like a six-point. You know, there's less grabbing surface on a six point than a 12 you know they're, they're much bigger i guess i don't know but somehow i managed to work my way down went to a 12 point 15 16th which we only had that in a three quarter size ratchet which is bigger than what i have you know i only have a half inch my uncle has the three quarter inch which we use to put the duels on or put that duel on but to back the bolts out for that, it was a 15-16 socket. And I didn't have a 15-16 socket in a... Um, I don't think I did. I don't know. I, I don't remember now. But but for some reason, it kept slipping off. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. The, hat, the one inch kept slipping off, even though for the first two bolts, it worked perfectly fine. And then I switched over to that one, and... They were all coming off, but they were on there really very, very, very tightly. Of course, I mean, I imagine that's never, ever been touched since the tractor was built. 
So chances of all that have been torn apart are probably pretty slim. If it has been torn apart, it's probably been well over 25 years ago. That, that was probably the last touch. Considering how tight those bolts were in there and how dirty everything was and just how gross everything was, yeah, it hasn't been touched for a while. So, but, whatever. So, if we're finally getting a little bit further in that, um, I'll insert a clip here. I did take a little video of it so you guys can see what I'm dealing with. If I remember, I'll overlay it on this, and then you guys can, I guess, yell at me, and if I did something wrong, you guys can yell at me, but from what I can tell, that's what I, that's what I have to do. Next will be figuring out how to get the thrust of the three-point off, and then, um, than the PTO, but unfortunately the young guy's going to have to be there to help me for that because I don't, I can't handle that. I think those things weigh like three, four hundred pounds and there's no way that me and my uncle can do it. Maybe we could, but I think it's best for the young guy to be here to, to at least kind of guide me. Um, but he even said too that you're going to, if you do have to pull the PTO, you're going to have to pull the top link cover, which is what the top link would connect to that has to come off as well but i don't know if i really want to do that yet because well one you're going to open the tractor up and you're exposing the internals to weather so i think i'd rather do maybe get the three point off and then start hunting for parts maybe looking for what parts we need um and then ordering them, and then when they get here, we'll look it over, make sure it's everything that we need, <clears throat> and then then we'll open it up. I don't think we should open it up now until we actually have the parts. So I think that's just for the best. So, but for the uh, little tractor, these are the parts that I ordered for now, and I don't know if they'll work or not. Um, well, chances are. We're going to have to pull, well, we got to pull the PTO on that, too. And, uh, I heard a loud yeah, doctor's hollering, I guess. But yeah. So we're going to have to pull the PTO on that, too, um, in order to fix my leak. So, <clears throat> I didn't want to, you know, not have what I think I needed, so I ordered what I think I needed. And... This is supposedly the seal for the PTO. You see, it's it's literally just like a cap. So you basically just you I think you you lube up the edges. I guess with a little bit of oil or maybe you even some grease or something. That's just to make it easier to drive it in. Doesn't take quite that much force. And uh, yeah, it's got. That's got a little rubber seal here, which on this one it feels obviously pretty soft. I can't feel the old one. So, somebody drove by. But obviously I can't feel the old one, but I imagine this is probably pretty dry rotted. Like it's dried out and it's not, it's not moving like it should, so that's why it's leaking. So hopefully that's the correct one for my tracker. Apparently there are... There was two different sizes, but I don't know. Yeah, they they still did it. Um, no, they don't use IH's number anymore, but they, the one that's in the tractor, they had a part number or number something stamped right here. But now I see they use Steiner's part number, which is actually in the little rubber the little black rubber piece which you guys can't see on camera but it's in there so at least there would be a part number for future use if you need to you know replace it again well then you would know what you would need so that's that <clears throat> okay now considering that i'm going to have to pull the pto um this i ordered the gasket kit for it because i don't know um, if, if I'll need it or not. I don't know if this is even the right one. It said that it was. So, but this apparently comes with all the the gaskets I need. I'm not, I'm not going to use them all, obviously. 
I think the main one, I think it's just going to be this big silver guy, I think, is the one I'm going to need. Um, I think you could have ordered just that, but I figured, well, why not just order the whole kit, and then if you need it, well, then you have it. But, but I think for now I'm going to try... And hopefully we don't have to use all of this. I'm hoping that it's just... I think it's just this big silver guy. And then maybe this guy here. I don't really know. There's another one here. There's supposed to be four. So one, two, three, and four. Let's see they're here. So I don't think I'll need these round ones. There's a good chance I'll probably just need this. And then maybe this. I don't know. But this probably for sure because... That is supposed to be for the whole PTO thing. I think that's, I have to remove the whole thing. And then I have to pretty much, I think in order to, re, to take this out, to do it the proper way, you have to go in from the inside and you'd have to punch it, punch the old one out. <clears throat> Which is what I want to do because I know it's going to be more of a nuisance if you have to sit here. Because literally there was a guy in line that had to do this to a farm all uh, farm all 400 or something or 450 i can't remember what because that's that's different though too it's a totally different seal too but um <clears throat> it's still this style like it's still i think that the you know where it's just like an an empty cavity you have to just you know punch this or pound it in well he had heard that you could just drill a little hole and then run a screw through it and do that like in two or three different places and then you could literally pull the seal out but he says that didn't work he ended up, ended up just pulling the screws out so he, he ended up destroying the seal the thing is is i don't really want to do that because i don't want to destroy the old seal because if this doesn't work then I could put the old one back in and then just, you know, deal with a leaky tracker. But, um, you know, so I'm hoping that this will fix my leak, at least on the, on the PTO shaft. But the gaskets, I don't know. I probably need, I only need probably one or two out of that whole set, but at least we'll have them there for future use just in case you spring a leak somewhere else. Right. So this showed up literally um a day a day and a half later than it really should have should have been here this should have been here friday or saturday but i think it could have been here friday if they just would have put it on a truck and you know moved it instead of it just sitting all freaking weekend so but it is what it is unfortunately um we'll just we'll just freaking deal with it we have it here now, and I don't know, like I said, when I'm even going to attempt to get into this. Because as soon as the young guy shows the hell up, gets the hay cut, and we can, you know, and he starts fucking bailing this shit. We're going to start hauling trees, and I want to get that done. And, and I don't know, I don't really want to have the tractor tore apart. And then, you know, he starts bailing hay or cutting hay i will have to just kind of focus on one thing at a time so in case the a is going to be down for a while well then we don't have to worry about it because the tractor we don't technically have a use for it right now we do we have a use for the a and we're going to use that plus the 400 to haul trees and you know i just i need both tractors so i don't dare tear the a apart right now I would just leave it the way it is. And then when we're closer to the end, you know, when we're all said and done, well, then we'll tear the bitch apart and then, you know, just we'll just take our time with it. So, but as of right now, like I said, I don't dare open it. I don't dare open that and I don't dare open in the 15 uh, because I don't have, this, you know, I don't have all the parts for that too. So, but I might try to hunt for those maybe next month. Um, because chances are we're probably not going to get that far with it if we can get the lift arm off get the lift arms off well that would be a great start i mean i got literally everything else off 
that I didn't think would have to come off, but listening to that video, you pretty much have to gut it. So everything has to come off, including the PTO, the top link cover, and then there's a bracket inside there that you have to remove. So it just sounds like it's going to be a nightmare. So I think for now, um, we'll just, I'll just focus on the three point hitch, try to remove, remove the rest of that. And then we'll be done. If I, if I get that off, no problems, it's been fighting, but if it doesn't come off, then I don't know, I'll have to heat it up really good. But, um, <clears throat> Kind of just is what it is at, at this point. So, but, but yeah, so this is what I've been waiting for. Um, <laughs> is that's supposedly my seal that I need. Pray to God this works because I've heard, I know one guy said that he replaced the one on his, either again it was a 400 or a 450. Um, but he said that he put a new one of these in and it didn't fix the problem. So I'm hoping either he got a bad one, like a bad seal that wasn't very good to begin with. Or maybe he got the wrong one or he didn't do it right or something. I don't know. But I'm hoping that this will fix my leak. And it doesn't continue to leak. I, mean, I kind of figured there'd probably be a chance that a tiny little bit might get by. Even though it's not supposed to, I don't think, 100%. But... I think it's supposed to stop every little drop of oil that oil that tries to bypass, but I think even if it just by just just a very small amount leak by, I'd probably be okay with it. Because right now it's it's leaking pretty good. And and that's not really acceptable because that that's a lot of oil to be losing. And 80, 90 oil is not cheap, and I'm getting low on that stuff as well too. So hoping by replacing that seal that'll that oil seal, it'll fix the problem. And then, uh, <clears throat> we'll just go from there. So, but anyway, guys, I'm going to take off. I just wanted to give you guys a little, you know, there you go. <laughs> Parts are finally here, so we can tackle that here probably next month, probably. Because um, who knows when the young guy will get here to cut hay and how long it'll take to bail and then what we're going to do for moving the bales. And then, uh, yada, 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 fucking yeah. So, oh, and the other thing. I finally found that website. I couldn't remember who it was, but I found them. They sell, now they don't sell the whole thing, but apparently you can buy it in, ooh. You can buy it in chunks. So, this. That's the exhaust, uh, that's the exhaust valve, right? That's what I need for the farm OA. Okay, well, supposedly, you can buy, I don't know how to show this, but you can buy just the bottom half or the upper half or the parts inside. So whatever you need. Technically, I only need the bottom half. I don't need the full thing. I can just transfer all this over. Um... So, and it looks like it's the, the correct one for this. So, that's another thing I'm going to risk doing as well. Only problem. Now, he says that he he has used ones. Where he finds them from, I don't know. I guess he just goes to junkyards and pulls them off of junk tractors. But, he says that you can get a used one, but if you want a brand new one. Now, supposedly for a brand new one. Which, in my opinion, is probably just one that's been rebuilt and repainted to look new. He wants $120 for the bottom half. That's not all of it. It's just the bottom half. And who knows what that's going to cost for shipping. Who knows what shipping is and whatever. Because I did email him. Um, because the only way... The only way that you can talk to these fucking people, which I think is ridiculous, is one, through email, which is what I did, just to... To confirm all this. And if you wanted to actually place a order for that particular part or for anything else, you have to call. You have to actually call in. You can't order this on, on their website, which I think is a ridiculous thing. 
because this is 2024, this is not the 1960s. We should be able to order stuff online, you know. So I'm almost kind of wondering, you know, there too, if I'm actually going to get it. You know, maybe it's some kind of a scam. I don't know. But he looks like a legit company, so I don't know. But So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to order the bottom half. Now, the, there is supposed to be a seal in here, and it is supposed to be fire-resistant. I think you can also order that from him, but you just, like, other companies that... I mean, you can just buy or roll that stuff anywhere and just make your own, which is probably what I'll end up doing anyway. Um, <clears throat> and then, like I said, I'll just transfer the internal guts and then the top cap over to the new one. Save myself some money instead of having to try to order all that costing like four or five hundred bucks and then you know it's just a pile of piss to begin with so um but i think that this thing has definitely been tinkered with over its lifetime um well actually yeah i guess i should have ordered i don't know i guess i forgot about this i probably should have ordered order the top cover too because it's cracked here it's cracked here. This whole left ear here is cracked off. And I don't know if that's... I'm guessing this is all cast iron. If it was steel, I'd probably just go in there with my welder and just weld that crack up and just be perfectly fine with it. So yeah, I don't. I might have to order, I guess. I forgot about that. Um, I think I can salvage the parts inside. I don't know. He can, I think you can kind of deal with the crack, too. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just put some JB Weld on top of that and call it day done. Because it is rated for, like, 1,100-something degrees. I don't know if the farm walls would ever get that hot. But, yeah. But, yeah, I, did, I forgot about that, that crack up there. So, I would be almost better off just ordering the top and the, the bottom. But that's 240 bucks or whatever. And that's not including the internal parts. So, which I think I could just reuse off of this. So, uh, I don't know. You guys tell me, but. So, I don't know. But yeah, you probably could fix it, you know, a little bit. So, but I, I definitely think this is this has been tampered with, you know, throughout the years. Because one, it's got washers behind it. And I don't think that's a factory thing. And it's got two different sized bolts in there. Uh, one's a square headed nut and the other one's just a regular nut like today. So obviously this has been torn apart at one point. And, you know, they just, they had to do what they had to do. But, you know... That bottom half is 120 bucks, so I imagine the top is probably the same. So there's 200 and something dollars, you know. And I don't even know if it's. I mean, it looks like it's the correct stuff because I I can compare it in my book to what he's got online, and the part numbers are the same. They actually use the original Farmall numbers, part numbers. They don't use newer ones or anything like that. So that's how I'm able to confirm it this via part numbers. And just the, the overall shape of that, it all matches. But they only sell it in chunks, like pieces. You can't get just get the whole thing, which, well, if the whole thing, that could be $300, which is ridiculous, I think, because I bet you back in the day that costed probably like 25 bucks. So, but maybe he's, he's charging that much too because he's had to restore a lot of these. And, you know... And there are people out there that are, that are looking for them. So, and I have one, but it's it is it's obviously it, it's junk. So, um, so, but then after that, you know, if if I can find one, well, I like I said, I did find one, obviously. But if I went through the trouble of ordering a whole new one and making sure that it matches, <clears throat> then I could order the uh 
what do they call that stupid thing? The header or, or the manifold for it. And then there you go. <laughs> What's going on there? But yeah. You know. So I don't know. But you guys tell me. So anyways, guys, I'm going to take off. So I guess I uh, have a good day and stuff and stuff. So yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care easy.